So let's talk about this whole Sigma male claim trend that's going on, that's circling the internet these days. Let's also talk about the black pill, the red pill, all the different pills, the no pill, etc. So on and so forth. So first of all, what I've noticed is recently there's been this pattern over the last handful of years of all sorts of guys everywhere claiming that they're Sigma males, right? Online, you see YouTube videos about it. It's literally just another version of another variation of, oh, I am unique, therefore it equals sigma. I am introverted, therefore it equals sigma. I am a deep thinker, therefore it equals. I am this super hyper unique outlier because I think deeply. This kind of a trend, right? When in reality, the vast majority of these guys claiming that they're sigmas are literally just normie tier looks guys or high tier normie looks guys. Um, some of them are better looking. Some of them are Chad looks tier or whatever, but they're, they're using the Sigma claim as their excuse as to why they don't have more success with women than they would otherwise have or believe they should have. Right. When in the reality, the actual Sigma male is a man who effectively mimics extroverted quote unquote people who are considered by the masses of women, alpha males who never claim that they're alphas, actual sigmas successfully and effectively mimic extroverted alpha behavior. And that's how they are successful with women. That's what defines an actual sigma in actual reality. While you maintain in your private life, your introversion, your love for deep thinking, hyper nerdy stuff, etc but you mask a lot of it and you mimic extroverted behavior to ensure your success with larger numbers of women, right? That's an actual Sigma in behavior. And those guys don't claim that they're Sigmas. They just do the actions to gain, gain and ensure success with women, right? 95 to 98% of the time, I could almost bet money on it that these guys claiming that they're Sigmas are not sigmas, and the very fact that they're claiming that means that they're almost guaranteed not to actually be that. Because an actual sigma does not feel the urge to claim that they are a sigma. In fact, an actual sigma is totally fine being considered by other men to be a beta. Uh, and hell, he's even fine with women considering him to be a beta because he's hypercalculated and he understands that others' perceptions are literally all it's about in terms of what's going on. So they're pretty much mostly irrelevant. It's just, okay, you're engaging in the formula of what's attractive to others, specifically women, or you're not, and you're therefore getting the success or you're not. People can call you alpha or sigma or beta or whatever they call you. The point is you're assessing your own situation as a sigma, and you're just zoned in on your own direct success or lack thereof and exactly why. And you know why or you know why not. And it's just, everybody else talking and saying stuff is just noise. It's just yapping. Okay. That's an actual Sigma. It's like, boom. All right. What success do I have with women directly face to face? Am I getting the sex I want, the romance I want with the types of women I want, or is that not happening? Okay. You assess your own situation. There it is. People are going to call you alpha, Sigma, beta, whatever they want to call you. You're just zoned in on what you're doing. That's an actual Sigma. And you never claim you're a Sigma, even if others call you that, right? You're fine with whatever label people call you because you're zoned in on what you're doing directly. That's where your focus is, right? None of this competing with others, comparing yourself to others, getting in your head about, oh, why don't I have as many women as this other guy over here? Why am I not as popular? Well, you know why. As an actual Sigma, you understand why because you understand the actual logistics and shit like that, right? So these are just some examples of what I'm trying to get at here. And an actual Sigma will process what I'm saying correctly and understand what I'm getting at, right? <clears throat> Hell, even without me needing to say it, he'll get it. So <clears throat> this is very important to understand because if you claim yourself as an Alpha or a Sigma publicly, right? You need to understand as a man that you doing that instantly and immediately reduces your sexual market value slightly. Because people are turned off and annoyed by any degree of traceable, trackable, publicly notable, what they deem to be arrogance. 
So if you want to shoot yourself in the foot or scrape yourself in the foot or cut your foot a little bit, uh, we'll go ahead. Go right ahead and claim yourself publicly to be an alpha or a sigma and watch what happens. Yeah, you'll still have success and all that other type of stuff, but it'll unnecessarily just make your success a little bit less effective. A little bit, right? So just don't do it. It's just kind of dumb to do that, you know? The actual alpha or actual sigma just does in action, but never claims. Just like the tough guy, the actual tough guy in action, when push comes to real shove, actual survival situations, actual situations where people need to be protected from harm. Well, that's when your toughness comes out, right? But you don't claim you're tough. You don't claim you're this tough guy that can handle shit. You just do when the situation arises or you don't. You just do or don't. That's an actual tough guy, distinguished from a tough guy routine claimer, right? So just like claiming you're an alpha or a sigma publicly is really dumb and decreases your sexual market value slightly just by claiming that, publicly claiming you're a tough guy or can handle shit and are this manly man, gur type figure, to any degree, claiming that publicly at all is it just immediately also chips down your SMV ever so slightly, unnecessarily. Because now you have a standard and a bar that others are going to hold you to. Oh, so you're claiming to be a tough person. So let's test this claim. And then you have these swarms of fucking people throughout the world, online and in person, who are now going to keep poking at you and testing how tough you are. Whereas if you just didn't claim that, you would have a lot less people doing that, you know? Um, It's pretty simple to understand for... Deeply intellectual people. Low IQ people or low intellect people. Yes, IQ is separate from intellect. Obviously, that shouldn't have to be said. High intellect people automatically understand that without it being needed to be said. As one of many examples. But high intellect slash and or high IQ people understand these things inherently. Uh, But low IQ slash and or low intellect people need these things always explained to them, and they never really get it, no matter how many times it's explained to them. It just doesn't register. Uh, Bad brain brain chemistry, you know? What can you do if somebody just doesn't fucking get it? So that's the first part I wanted to cover here. Don't claim you're a sigma. Don't claim you're a fucking alpha. Let others yap their jaws and say you're alpha, sigma, beta, whatever they want to say. Just stay zoned in on your own success, your own niche, your own demographic, Getting what you want directly, stay focused on that. Boom. That's it. Don't get distracted by all those other bullshit. All right? Because people are going to keep yapping, yap, yap, yap. That's all they're ever going to fucking do. Talk, 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 talk. So just zone in on what you're fucking doing. All right? That's what I do. And of course, you're going to deal with situations as they arise, interact with people and deal with shit, make, make stuff happen the way you want, obviously. But you're going to stay focused in on what you want as your results, right? You're not going to get distracted by others' results or lack thereof. So let's talk about black pill, red pill, all the way up to no pill. Uh, Behavior sets, you know, knowledge sets, looks, tears, heights, tears, all this other types. Let's talk about it, all right? So the biggest problem within the black pill world right now is you got a bunch of guys who actually look better than they think they look, right? Who are unnecessarily shooting themselves in the foot, who should be aware of the reality of black pill information. But at the same time, they should understand it doesn't apply to them to the degree they think it does in many cases. For example, if you're a guy teetering on the sub five level of looks, right? And if you just do your hair a certain way, smile more often, and behave differently, you can increase your looks tier in the minds of others up to like normie level, right? Looks. If you're able to do that, why the fuck are you just basking in black pill zone when you could get yourself into red pill zone, which means the realm of having to do things in interaction max and looks max and stuff, keep yourself healthy, athletic, to have marginal success with women here and there, right? Why not do that versus just basking in black pill, that's it. That's just really dumb, right? The vast majority of men can at least bring themselves into red pill territory in terms of the degree of success they experience. Most guys can. Even somewhat shorter guys. 
The only guys who realistically can't do that are very short guys who look absolutely horrible and also have terrible personalities, all three together. But if you have good, decent looks and a good personality, you can at least get yourself into normie zone and have marginal success with really short women here and there, right? It's doable. It's very much so doable. Yes, it's going to be annoying. Yes, it's going to be a certain amount of hard work. Yes, it's going to be irritating periodically, and you're going to have to take breaks and bounce back into it off and on. But it's doable. But that's the point. There's no reason for you, as a guy who's normie looks to to be basking in black pill zone for your own situation, is what I'm trying to get at, okay? So men need to be able to accurately analyze their own looks to and what they're able to do. You need to not underestimate yourself, but round down so that you can actually max to a higher looks tier and to a higher attractiveness tier by rounding down in terms of your overall assessment of yourself, instead of rounding down with the result that you just don't do anything to improve anything. That's really fucking stupid. Um, so this is basically guys who are able to have success within red pill world red pill zone stuff, right? Interaction maxing and whatnot looks maxing, but just don't do it because they're lazy and it's not easy, right? That's kind of fucking pathetic. Really? Seriously. You know? So like you can do better than that because even Chad should do that. Even Chad's looks wise. So let me talk about red pill zone guys. All right. So we're talking about black pill guys who can get themselves into red pill zone. Now let's talk about red pill zone guys. Well, let me first off clarify what I'm trying to get at here in case you're a little bit confused, all right? So, and in case you don't know what these terms mean, right, online. So, black pill is referring to the awareness of how unbelievably mechanically formulaic female attraction is to men in terms of, um, like, across the board, everywhere you go throughout the world, the female obsession with height, with looks, and if you lack height and looks, and also if you lack the understanding of how to interact with women in ways that they find attractive, if you lack any of these things, instantly, directly, your degree of attractiveness to women is immediately decreased to that degree. So to whatever degree you lack height, to whatever degree you lack looks, to whatever degree you lack interactive ability, uh, high extroverted uh, interactability, et cetera, or ability to mimic that to whatever degree you lack these things to that degree, you're going to have that much less success with women as a whole in general, as a trend that's black pill. Okay. Red pill is where they're emphasizing. Okay. Red pill is aware of that stuff, but they emphasize looks maxing, learning how to interact with women in ways that are attractive, etc. And they also emphasize doing the absolute maximum you can to increase to the maximum degree your attractiveness to women, right? That's red pill zone content, mindset, psychology, etc. So black pillars, in other words, every man should understand the accuracy of black pill information by itself, but understand that black pill information doesn't apply to you directly if you look good and are tall, Okay. It actually only applies to you to the degree you lack the looks, you lack the height, you lack the interactability, etc. It only applies to you directly to that degree. This is the thing every man needs to understand about black pill content. It's a set of information. It's not a mindset you should have towards your own life if it doesn't apply to you. Okay? So you have way too many guys thinking black pill information applies to them directly in terms of, oh... This means you yourself are going to guaranteed lack this degree of success because black pill information. No, you have to assess, do you look good? Are you tall? So if that's the case, black pill is only going to apply to you to the degree that you lack looks or lack height and lack interactability. All right. Red pill is also a set of information. So every man needs to understand that red pill content, red pill mindset, red pill stuff applies to men who are in a normie looks tier zone. Okay. So lower normie looks up to upper tier normie looks 
right? Normal slash, uh, normie slash average looks range, right? Either low tier up to high tier. Red pill content applies to you. You're going to need to max out your looks and all this other type of stuff so that you can actually compete with chads, chad lights, etc. in terms of looks, height, and behavior, right? Now, there's a type of content that I call no pill content, which is what I suggest men actually embrace, which is actually what I'm getting at right here. You're aware of all the different pill zones and levels and layers. You're aware of the accuracy of information pertaining to particular demographics of men within those zones, black pill, red pill, or otherwise. But you yourself don't embrace pills in terms of those psychologies for yourself. You're aware of the information, but you yourself have a different, much healthier perception of yourself outside of the information, okay? So in other words, you'll be aware that in the realm of people at large, women at large, what degree of attractiveness to women you're going to be considered due to what you look like, right? What you look like in the mirror. You're going to be vividly aware of that as a no-pill guy. And at the same time, you're going to simply have a much higher estimation of yourself than others have of you. You're just going to look at the information for what the information is, but you're not going to be like, oh, because informationally, factually, a larger number of women aren't attracted to me because I'm high in introversion, because I'm not as maxed out in looks as I possibly could be, etc. Okay, big deal, whatever. It's just information. It's the facts of what's going on in the world. My evaluation of myself, though, is way deeper than that information that I'm aware of. You see what I'm saying? So you don't devalue your valuation of yourself, your looks, just because others don't consider you to be as good looking. You can still consider yourself to be better looking. That is no pill. That is pill free mindset, psychology, which is what I suggest all men embrace while behaviorally due to information and in consideration of, okay, what results do I want interpersonally? All right, here's the information to act on. All right, here's my looks tier in the minds of others, even though I think I look better. So therefore, I'm going to max so that in the minds of others, I'm more attractive. But you don't let confidence in yourself while doing so. Do you see what I'm saying? Good. I'm glad you do. <clears throat> now, of course, this is much easier to do if you're a, a good looking guy who's tall already. Of course it is. Everything's easier said than done. But the point is, this is the psychology you should embrace as a man. This is how you're going to come across to other men and women and people in general, reasonable people who don't have something out against you, just people in general. I'm not talking about because people who don't like you or you've had an altercation with, they're always going to hunt for something to downplay about you, your height, your looks, whatever, right? Those aren't the people we're talking about here. We're talking about people in general, you know, just out and about that you interact with, you know, that don't specifically have something out against you, right? Because their opinions are relevant because they're going to hate you anyway, no matter what you do. No matter how looks maxed you are, they're going to be jealous of you, envious, whatever. So they're invalid. I'm talking about in general, people who aren't specifically, you know, brooding on their jealousy towards you or despising you or whatever, right? So... Please make sure to apply this awareness in your interactiveness and behavior with others so that you have maximal success with women and with people interpersonally. And so you're liked and an interesting person. So let's talk about the importance of being an interesting person as well. Okay. Part of the problem is in this world, a lot of introverts behaviorally on top of the introversion are just not interesting fucking people. Same thing with extroverts. There's plenty of extroverts that are just not fucking interesting people. They're overly basic. They're overly just dull and boring. They're just overly common in behaviors and in how they go about interacting, what their interests are. There's just, there's not much that's really unique, bizarre, quirky, or off the wall about them enough for them to be an interesting person, right? So even if you are within the extroverted world and accepted due to your extroversion, well, you still need to max out being an interesting person. 
You can't just be extroverted in the realm of yap, 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 talk, 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 because people are just going to get annoyed by you, even as an extrovert, and not want to be around you because you talk too fucking much. And you talk too much about boring ass bullshit. Stop it. You know? And then you wonder why so many extroverts are lonely and feeling like they're not having success with people and all this other. Oh my God, it was because you're a boring fucking person. God damn it. Develop some interests that are more unique and exciting and shit. Fuck, snap out of it. And then you'll have success interacting with a wider range of people, you know? And they'll want to be around you. And stop talking so fucking much. Let them say something. Get a word in edgewise, you know? God damn. For fuck's sake. You know, it's stuff like that, basically. Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly the types of people I'm talking about. You know exactly the psychologies I'm talking about. Let's be real. They're very common. So don't be that guy or gal and have the success you can easily have as an extrovert. So if you're an introvert, it's especially important you're an interesting person because you can't fucking use your introversion as your excuse as to why, oh, nobody wants to talk to you, be around you. No, most of that actually has to do with the fact that you're a boring fucking person on top of your introversion. So you can be an interesting introvert like I am. For example, people enjoy interacting with me and talking to me when they talk with me and interact with me. They have a fun experience having the interaction, right? Because I'm an interesting person. I have a wide range of interest in a wide range of things. I can talk about a wide range of subject matters and I'm aware of a wide range of subject matters that are exciting to talk about and interesting to think about, right? So people enjoy interacting with me, both extroverts and introverts. Yes, I get exhausted after interactions, no matter how much fun I'm having in them, because I'm an actual introvert, and that's how it goes, and I have to recharge, of course. But I'm interesting to interact with, with people. Even people who dislike me and get annoyed by me still find me bizarrely interesting to interact with, even though they might be annoyed. So in other words, what I'm getting at is even if somebody dislikes me, what they're disliking is something very hyper-specific about my bizarreness, eccentricity, weirdness, over-the-topness, etc. It's not just, oh, he's just a boring guy and I don't know. There's something about me that's really over-the-top weird as fuck that they're annoyed with. That's what they're annoyed with. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not just, oh, he's just boring. No, it's there's something weird about the fucking guy that I don't relate to. That's why I'm pissed off with him. So you see what I'm saying? So even... You need to be interesting to the point that even people who dislike you, it's because you're too fucking off the wall and bizarre and eccentric and weird and over the top. And there's some quirk about you that pisses them off versus just, oh, there's just nothing there going on. He's just a dull, boring rock. Right? You see what I'm saying? So you got to be that kind of a person where even the ones who hate you, hate you for a very solid reason. Right? It's not just... Oh, I just don't like the guy for, I don't know why though. No, they'll, they know why they dislike me. If somebody dislikes me, they know exactly motherfucking why. I guarantee you that one. It's never just, I don't know why I dislike him. I just don't like him. No, 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 no. Uh, -uh. no, no way. There's always a reason somebody dislikes me if they dislike me. And there's always a reason they like me if they like me. It's not just, Oh, I just randomly like the guy for, I don't know why, but no, there's a reason. You gotta be fucking interesting. That's why, right? So it's what I call calculated, contained eccentricity, all right? That is how you effectively flourish in the world of both extroversion and introversion. You have contained spurts, controlled spurts out of yourself, of your bizarreness and eccentricity that you regulate, that are exuded to the degree that extroverts and normies can handle for them to remain interested in interacting with you. Right. So my demographic is mainly in-person demographic. That's the realm I've chosen because I can't stand talking to a bunch of random ass people who I don't fucking know anything about, whether they praise me or dislike me. If I don't fucking know the quality of person you are, that's just not my jive or my vibe. That's why online stuff with YouTube, I just record these audios here and there as like a side hobby thing. But the majority of my life is other stuff, in-person interactions, etc. This is just a side hobby for me. Um, I don't make YouTube, and I probably never will, my main life or main focus, because I don't really like the world of random ass masses of people I don't know in detail, right? Because I know there's a, there's 
among the masses of you who are listening, a lot of your fucking assholes in your personal lives. And I don't know anything about the emotional abuse you put others through. And you probably don't even know about it. You're probably, many of you are probably emotional abusers, just like the emotional abusers I call out. And I'd probably be disgusted with you in person. A lot of you listening right now, a lot of you, I probably would like in person. But the thing is, you don't know until you know, unless I actually met you in person. I don't know jack fucking shit about any of you. Okay. As much as I think I might via your content or whatever, I'm vividly aware that, okay, I might like your content, but it has nothing to do with me for sure. Liking you in person. I have no fucking idea how much I'd like you in person or not over time, unless I know you in person over time. You see what I'm saying? That's just me. That's my jive. That's how I go about shit. You know, you may relate, you may not take it or leave it. Right. Um, Whereas the world of people who are highly successful on YouTube, they're okay with the world of random ass fucking people praising them or just saying shit or whatever, watching their content, who they don't know who these people are. That's just not really my world. I'm not really into that world, you know? So to each their own. And I think most humans aren't really into that world. And that's the main cause of why people have issues with social media. It's because most people actually are of my same mindset because the human psychology and physiology isn't evolved to have more people in your life than you directly know face to face. In other words, way back in the past, unless you actually knew the quality of people, who they were, what they were about in person over time, it could be very literally lethal to you, uh, not knowing who a person actually is, right? So nowadays we have these thousands of people nobody knows anything about. So it kind of drives human beings crazy. It's like, okay, who are these 20,000 fucking people subscribed to my channel, watching my stuff, who I know nothing about. They're liking my content and praising me and saying, you're so great and this and that. But who actually are these fucking people? Do they treat their kids well in private? Do they treat their girlfriends well, you know? Or if they're a girl, do they treat their boyfriend well? Do they treat their families well? Do they treat their kids well? What kind of person are they? I don't fucking know. They're just a fucking subscriber. Somebody listening to my shit. I have no idea who these fucking people are, right? Other than a small teeny handful of people I've actually video chatted with over time and developed some sort of interpersonal relationship with. Like 95, 98% of you, I have no fucking clue who you are. You know? So it's like, God, this... It's so obvious this is why all of this interpersonal depression and all this this problem shit keeps arising because you don't fucking know who you're talking to and interacting with. Neither the subscribers listening or the people doing the content. You don't know jack shit about me in person, really. No matter how much you assume you know about me via content, you don't know me unless you've actually met me in person. So full stop. Vice versa. I don't know you unless I know you in person. All right? <clears throat> And then this is where the idiots and oh, whoa, whoa. you went from black pill to red pill. And then you started ranting about this and that it's all connected. Motherfucker, high intellect people understand this. So those are the people I'm talking to high intellect people who don't need things explained and who see the connection and the flow of this entire video topic going forward and why I have it over a half hour versus shorter. Okay. So if you're, We talked about black pill and red pill. Now we're going to go into the realm of if you're a guy who is within Chad looks territory, Chad light territory, or hell, even upper tier normie able to teeter over into Chad light with looks maxing. This part is for you. Okay. So if you look in the mirror and you instantly are like, I fucking look good. Like you, it's not even like a question in your mind. You just automatically look at your face and you just are aware that, okay, I have an attractive looking face. Whether you're arrogant or humble about it, it's irrelevant. If you just look in the face and, and you like what you see, okay, you're attracted to your own face. Hey, this face is pleasant to look at in the mirror. Okay, you are within Chad Light territory, looks wise. All right? You need to have that degree of confidence and awareness that that is the case. If you look in the mirror and like, I look good, and it, there's not even a slight hesitation about how good you look at all. When you look in the mirror, not even slightly, there's no doubt, no self insecure anything there. You are at least within Chad Light looks territory. Okay? The reason it's so instantaneous and obvious to you is because it's also instantaneous and obvious to others. You look good. Okay? 
normie tier looks guys are guys who look in the mirror and you might think you look good, but you'll be teeter tottering, you know, but, uh, I probably could look better in terms of your own self-assessment of your own looks. Right. Whereas for me, when I look in the mirror, I know I look good. I know I'm at Chad, Chad light looks territory level. However, I'm aware informationally that a more chiseled jawline, a more maxed out looks face with more specificness to my features, right? Due to exercising more and all this stuff is going to be more attractive to women. I'm aware of that fact, but I don't consider my face to be unattractive at all. Do you see? And I'm aware it isn't, but I can still max it out. But I don't have any self lack of confidence in my looks like, oh, you know what? Hmm. I don't think I actually looked at. No, there's none of that. All right. But I'm aware of, but I'm still going to get better results if I increase my looks to be more what women are attracted to even more than what my face already is, right? And mass as a whole, as a trend, right? At large, women at large, a larger range of women, let's say, being attracted to my face specifically, right? Than already are. So... Knowing that, if you're looking in the mirror, okay, I fucking look good. Boom, you're Chad Light territory already, just like that. At the very least, top tier normie looks territory. Bare minimum, okay? If not full on Chad looks. All you need to do is just take care of your health, take care of your skin, smile genuinely often, and know how to interact with women in ways that they find sexually attractive. And you're going to fucking be golden. You're not going to have any issues, okay? And you're going to have no competition. Of course, that term no competition is figurative, right? It's another thing high intellect people will automatically grasp, but I'm going to explain it for people who may not be as high intellect. So when I say you have no competition as a Chad light or a Chad in looks, and if you're confident in your looks and height, etc., what I mean by that is in your own headspace, you have no competition with other men, right? You have no conflict of confidence. You have no lack of confidence in yourself at any time as a man who is a Chad Light or Chad. Okay? And if you understand how to interact with women properly in ways that are attractive, you have no competition figuratively. Obviously, in the world of physical logistics, yes, you have competition in that realm, but not in terms of your lack of confidence. You don't have competition there. Okay? So figuratively, and having that psychology that you have no competition, it really helps you being able to niche max, maxing out your specific demographic of women who are going to be your main focus group of who you're going to want to max out their attractiveness towards you, right? By understanding what women of that demographic find especially attractive versus not, right? Behaviorally, attitude-wise, looks-wise, etc., so on and so forth. So my personal thing I like to do is I like to MILF max. I like to max out to women who are like mid thirties or older up into well into sixties, seventies, whatever age they end up being. Um, age for me really is not a barrier. If, if a woman has a certain figure type, I'll date a woman of pretty much any age. Legitimately, seriously. I am very easily satisfied and not picky. As long as she's curvy, has got a bigger butt than the rest of her body, I'm satisfied. Her face can look whatever. However, um, I'm a curvature figure guy. I mean, face is just an additional bonus on top. It's like if, you know, it's like you have a cake and then you have a cherry on top or you have a cake and you have frosting on top. I mean, the cake is still going to be good either way. It's just if she had a good looking face, it's just like additional frosting on top that also tastes good. Right. That's basically how I look at what I'm attracted to. Right. <clears throat> um, I find women attractive if I like their personalities and I start to find their looks attractive if their personalities are attractive. That's how my brain works, right? Uh, and obviously, yes, there's certain automatic facial attractive features that I find attractive. Yes, but for me, it's not a requirement. Um, and this is what I recommend for all men is be much more easily satisfiable. So the reason I tend to like to MILF max in terms of, you know, single moms, Moms with big asses from having kids and things like this. It's like, 
and or just older, more mature women is it's a demographic that is far lower maintenance. That's easier to jive with for me that is accepting of my introversion to a greater degree, more tolerant of my bizarre eccentricities, more tolerant of any mistakes I might make in behaviors or interaction, etc. Not as fidgety, not as overly fast paced, more calm. And just overall, I mean, physiologically, I just find them physically more attractive overall, right? A certain amount of stretch marks and wrinkles are sexy as hell to me. It's just that like motherliness, the genuine motherliness in them exuding from them is what I find hot, right? And this is why MILFs are the biggest fetish online. But most guys who are younger, they don't really MILF max. Uh, They tend to focus on the demographic of like mid-20s women up to like 30s range women in terms of age. Um, And so they end up basically just shooting themselves on the foot because they don't have a very broad range of female types that they really find attractive. Um, I don't really feel sorry. I think it's kind of pathetic if a man can't find a woman who is thick and curvy and not specifically petite attractive. If If a guy is just only capable of finding petite women attractive, then he's like, he's really shooting himself in the foot really bad. And is kind of an idiot in my mind. Um, very hard to satisfy in a kind of warped, weird way. So it's like, all right, well, if you want to just be a loser of that variety, is only attracted to that kind of demographic woman, that's it. Well, okay, have fun having almost no success, you know? So, yes, I recommend men, MILF Max, in the sense of, Understand what more mature women find attractive. Understand how to interact with them in ways that um, you are going to be attractive to them, to the maximum, etc. Right? Understand the maturity markers in behavior combined with healthy kiddish childishness that they find sexually attractive to get in that groove of moms, MILFs, or single ladies that are just matured, Right? And have nice curvature to them. Thicker ladies, right? Or women who are, you know, whatever. You get my point. The more mature demographic, right? So this is why men who are past a certain threshold of age, your SMV goes up as a man. This is one of the big advantages of being a guy that you need to take full positive advantage of. Once you hit your mid-30s and get up into like your 40s range, you're literally going to be at your peak of attractiveness to the widest range of women, including younger women, if you know how to interaction max with them at your like mid-30s, mid-40s range, right? And hell, I've been up into 50s and 60s. Like Sean Connery is a great example, right? This guy was attractive to huge numbers of women, women of all demographics, even women in their 20s like Sean Connery, well into his fucking 70s to the day this guy died. This guy literally ends up dying whatever age he got to, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, way up there. And holy shit. I mean, the whole time he was considered a silver fox, attractive to women of all age groups, you know? So as a guy, you don't have to worry about hitting the wall or running into this trap of like, you know, having lower SMV as you get older, just being an old, if you just take care of your body, right. And stay athletic, stay healthy to as much as you can, you know, keep smiling genuinely. Your, your SMV is going to just automatically go up as a guy. Even if you're a fucking sub five and a guy who's not very attractive, you're going to be automatically more attractive as an older guy who takes care of himself than you were as a younger dude. Hell, even if you're a fucking sub five, right? Or a normie, lower tier normie and looks. Just being in that age group increases your sexual market value. Just being there, right? In terms of others' perception of you. <clears throat> But you're going to have to take advantage of it in the form of, yes, you're going to have to look smacks. Yes, you're going to have to do all the stuff to ensure that you increase your attractiveness to women, obviously. But use that automatic increase of SMV to your advantage. Don't let it go to waste, right? If you start to bald or have the weird, you know, hair patchiness or whatever, just keep your head fucking shaved. There's plenty of chicks attracted to bald guys. Yes, you may not have as large of a demographic of women attracted to baldness, but there are women who you can niche max out to uh, date who are specifically attracted to bald guys. Look at Jason Statham. He's a great example. 
There's tons of women who specifically like his baldness, and there's tons of women who specifically like the baldness of Vin Diesel, right? Because they're niche maxed in that specific persona, you know? Uh, both in person and in the films that they do, right? Just like Sean Connery was niche maxed into the Silver Fox persona thing. So you, here's the other thing, guys. All right. You've got to find your niche that you're maxed in. Like if you have an emo look to you, max that out. Dive into the emo world and be attractive to those demographic of women. If you have a goth persona thing to you, dive into niche maxing your goth persona out. Right. If you're punk persona guy interest area or whatever well max out your punkishness in terms of attract that's what my brother my younger brother he's a great example he's a niche maxed punk guy slash goth guy slash anarchist guy dude and he's very successful with women within that demographic the women within that demographic of that type of type that they like fucking love my brother okay but he's not really successful with women outside that demographic but he's insanely successful with women within that demographic, right? No matter how scraggly he lets his hair grow out and all this type of stuff, because he's niche maxed. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of, a part of the problem is a lot of guys who are just not interesting personality wise, they can't figure out a niche for themselves because they need to become an interesting person first. Right? So <clears throat> I guarantee you, you can find a niche for yourself. If you just think about it enough and be like, all right, what do I automatically just kind of flow into in, uh, you know, behaviorally, interaction range wise, what type of stuff do I like? Yes, there's a niche max for fucking like redneck shit too. Truck driving, country boy stuff. There's chicks specifically attracted to that type of a guy. So if you're into like the country road type lifestyle shit and that's your thing, country music or whatever, you know, jeans and a t-shirt, you like to hunt, you like to go into the woods and this and that or whatever, you like to work camo, there's a niche for that. So max that out, you know, you just have to make, you have to purposefully max it out though and actually do more of that. You can't just, oh, I'm just interested in these things and just expect things to flow. No, you got to get good at niche maxing, right? If you're a suit and tie guy, you're like a business world type of a guy. That's your kind of zone, right? CEO type stuff. There's a niche for that. There's women attracted to that shit. If you're a renaissance guy, historical costume guy, cosplay guy, right? There's a niche for that. You just got to fucking find what it is and own it and go for it and dive into it. You know, me personally, I have a niche in like multiple different areas. I've got emo, goth, historical, renaissance, um, sci-fi, nerdy. You know, I can pretty, I can fit a lot of different niches because I have a wide range of interests. I can do the suit and tie thing also, if and when I need to, um, you know, so it really is best to be a polymath in terms of your niches so you can dive into any of them. But depending on the setting you're going to go into, you always want a niche max for that particular setting as much as you can, right? And you're going to, you're going to shine in your success if you do this, right? Um, this is, this is such a fucking overlooked topic. It's unbelievable. I mean, usually when people talk about niche max and they talk about zoning in on only one niche, that's it. Or they overemphasize not being eclectic in niches. But I don't really see all that much talk about the importance of maxing out from multiple different niche areas. Being like a chameleon niche wise, right? So you can actually have a very wide range of women who are going to be attracted to you. Um, and that's the fucking thing. If you can just get streamlined in terms of how to date properly and how to give good quality dates to women, you're going to ensure that after that things are much easier because after the first initial date one or two, things actually become a lot easier. It, it you can, you're, you have much more wiggle room for mistakes and shit like that. After the first few dates, once her emotions are now hooked on you, than you had in the initial interaction, because once your hormones are surging towards you, then it's a lot easier to bounce back from stupid mistakes and, you know, carrying yourself the wrong way, having the wrong mood, saying the wrong thing or whatever the fuck it is, or just not looking very good that day because you were lazy or something. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So that is stuff you all need to keep in mind going forward in the realm of being attracted to women. Because here's the other thing. Here's what I want to end this video on. And I think this is more important than anything else I've talked about so far in this video. 
What you want to make sure of is you want to make sure that you take full advantage of all of these things right now more than ever, because here's why. Notice the trend online and throughout the world. More and more men are getting more and more hopeless as time is going on. This trend is increasing, right? Less and less men are actually actively dating than were before, right? So guess what? Because less and less men are doing this, you being a man who's still doing this, you're going to be that outlier who's still doing it, whereas other men are not. Do you understand? So that's going to become ever more as time goes on, a more rare thing for, oh, this is a guy who actually dates women. This is a guy who actually meets in person. This is a guy who actually does this shit. Holy shit. That's fucking rare. That's fucking cool. You're going to be niche maxed in that regards. You see? While other guys start slacking off and diving into hopelessness and compromising, right? You're going to be fucking rocking your A-game as one of the rare men still going out and about doing this shit. Whereas other men just aren't doing it anymore, right? And doing it well. Understanding accurately your looks tier and the formula that women find attractive. Yes, it's unbelievably formulaic. And that is exactly the, that's the specific piece of information that the black pill has correct. But you shouldn't be hopeless knowing that piece of information. If you have any degree at all of looks to you that women might even find remotely attractive, you have no reason to feel hopeless at all. You should use that to your advantage that you know the information you need to fucking know to guarantee your success beyond all the hopeless naysayers and guys just crying alone in their fucking bedrooms or shouting alone in their bedrooms or getting pissy in their bedrooms or coping in their bedrooms. You can remain a guy who goes out and about and keeps doing the interaction thing like a badass, even if you're an introvert. And being good at mimicking extroverted neurotypical behavior so that you can get the results you want and later on show your eccentricity to the girl over time. Okay. Damn. I mean, it's just, it's really not, it's not as complicated as guys make it out to be for themselves directly. This, let me put it that way. Okay. You're your own biggest enemy in terms of the degree of additional problems you're going to cause yourself if you embrace hopelessness and all this other type of shit. You're your own fucking worst enemy. Worse than other people saying shit to you and downplaying you and everything else. You need to be aware of the reality of the situation in terms of what looks and height tier you are, but you need to actually, on top of that, not lack confidence in yourself, though. Look at the world for the bullshit that it is. Okay, this is the information. This is what people find attractive, but that's bullshit. And just look at it that way. But you're not going to pout about it or whine about it. You're just going to see, okay, it's a bullshitty world. I'm not going to be hopeless about that. It's bullshit. So I'm going to go forward amid the bullshit and get all the advantages I can having all the information I need. That should be your fucking psychology as a fucking badass. Okay? You're going to max out the maximal success you can possibly get in the world of women, no matter what happens, knowing all the information about height, looks tier, the exact formulaic shit that women are attracted to, the zero margin of error for mistakes and stuff, and you're going to flourish if you zone in on this shit. The problem is most men most of the time are lazy as fuck. They want things easily handed to them, too much, too much so, to the point where They just fucking fall into hopelessness so goddamn easily, so fucking fast. And there's even fucking Chad and Chad Light looks guys that fucking do this. Enough. Okay, this isn't only the guys that look bad that do this. There's plenty of good looking guys that fall into this hopelessness too. And it's really fucking pathetic. Especially if you're a tall, good looking guy. Stop it. Stop. You don't need to feel hopeless at all about your situation. If your average looks, you also need to stop it. You also don't need to feel hopeless about your situation. You need to zone in and get in the groove of what you're able to have success within. Okay? And you need to ensure it. Not just, uh, oh, if it happens, it happens. No. You need to know how to interact to where people will be attracted to you. Romantically and otherwise. So I talk about all those details of the formula and everything else and many other pieces of content. So scroll down my videos, look at those pieces of content if you're interested in those specifics. Check it out. 
and other content creators. The content creator I recommend more than anybody else is Corey Wayne. Coach Corey Wayne on YouTube. His stuff is top notch. Whether you like the guy or not or are annoyed by the guy or not is irrelevant. Just pay attention to the specifics that he's talking about and understand the nuances of how that applies to your own unique situation. Don't follow him like a robot, but understand the gist of what he's getting at there. Okay? Pay attention to the patterns that he talks about, and you will see major success interacting with women. It'll be a night and day difference. If you understand how to apply it to your own situation, okay? And you're not just a dumb robot, okay, formula, this exact robotic formula, and only this exact wording. No, no, just... Mix it up to your own unique twist on it, right? But do those things and don't stray too much from the formula is the idea. That's the concept, right? <clears throat> you can stray a little bit, you know, niche maxing your uniqueness in there, but not too much. All right. So check him out. I recommend his stuff highly. Brush aside if you dislike him or you think he's an asshole or this, just ignore that part and be like, okay, what exactly is he getting at though? In terms of what he's saying or talking about. And also watch other content creators in terms of black pill content, red pill content. Be aware of a wide range of content types. Be aware of a wide range of psychologies of men and why they have those psychologies. Be aware of the terrain, right? Don't just fixate on one specific person, what they're saying. Take it all as a cohesive whole and pick up on the pattern there. Okay. So, that's my message to all men who may be listening. You're probably actually better looking than you think you look like, even though the world at large only has a very minuscule, ever smaller range of what they consider to be actually good looking. You still actually look good outside of that stupid, bullshitty, overly small funneled in range of what women consider to be highly attractive. You actually look good in reality beyond what they consider to be the only types of men who look good, right? So, yes, this applies to a wide range of normie men and, hell, even certain sub-fives. You actually don't look that bad in reality. It's just that women as a whole won't perceive you to be looking good due to very specific evolutionary things, etc. It doesn't mean you actually look bad, though. That's what you need to fucking understand very fucking clearly. Other people thinking you don't look good doesn't mean you actually don't look good. You have to understand this if you're a black pill guy. And you have to really, really, really hone in on that and really grasp that that's the case very well and why that's the case. You cannot mistake, okay, others see beauty this way, therefore that is what's beautiful. No, it's what others consider beautiful that information is useful. You need to act on that information. Okay, others don't consider me good looking, but I'm aware that I still look better than others consider me to look if you're black pill guy, right? Or if you're a red pill guy, same thing. Hell, even if you're a Chad Light or Chad in looks, same fucking thing. Have a higher assessment of yourself in terms of how you feel about yourself, but have a Lower assessment of yourself in terms of, okay, but I'm going to need to do these things to max out my looks because in others' perception, I'm not as attractive as I, as I consider myself to be. Okay? Combine these two psychologies as a cohesive whole to succeed together at the same fucking time. Okay? And never, ever, ever, ever... Allow yourself to collapse or to fall into hopelessness because that is only going to make things worse. It will not improve anything. You have to shake it off and don't let yourself feel hopeless. Just like you can't let yourself feel depressed. Shake the motherfucker off and move forward. Get rid of it because it's not going to help you. It's going to be a useless baggage on top of the sadness or stress or bother you already experience. So you can't afford to let the hopelessness sink in or cascade over you or shroud over your consciousness or awareness. You got to shake the motherfucker off for your own well-being and health. All right. Yes, we live in a bullshitty world. Yes, I'm talking from the perspective of someone who looks good and is tall. I'm aware of that, but I'm also aware of 
the bigger problem of men being lazy as fuck in terms of not maxing out their looks, not learning how to interact with women in ways that they find attractive, and caving into hopelessness overly fucking easily. That's the bigger problem. That's a way bigger problem than lack of looks or height, which is also a problem. Yes. Nobody's denying that's a problem. It is a problem. But the bigger problem is your attitude towards your own situation. That's the much bigger issue than your lack of looks or height, okay? Or ability to interact with women in ways they find attractive. The much bigger issue is your lack of confidence, if that is a a thing. A much bigger issue is that, all right? Because it doubles and triples the self-harm that happens to your own emotionality and psychology about yourself above and beyond the bullshit of others in their perception towards you, okay? So nip it in the bud, right? So let me know what you think in the comments below about this content. I'm interested to see what you have to say about it. And please have your comments reflect all the specific points I covered and be accurate to what I've actually said in the video, okay? Fully acknowledging all the different tiers of psychologies, black pill, red pill, everything else in between. <clears throat> blue pill psychology, we'll talk about more, but we don't really need to talk about blue pill because everybody understands that. They understand the bullshit of blue pill. It's uh, Most of my audience grasped that already, so it's it's pretty much irrelevant. It's like, really the only relevant topics are black pill, red pill, no pill topics, right? Blue pill is just, okay, it's it's all the weak, gravelly bullshit that, that doesn't actually attract women and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all that jazz, right? Um, so that's why I didn't cover that in this video. <clears throat> but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, I want to hear what you have to say. Don't leave any of, here's, here's my one request to you. If you're a black pill guy in the black pill zone, be a badass black pillar in the form of understand the information that the black pill talks about, but Express that you are not hopeless yourself about yourself, that you're still confident in yourself directly outside of the bullshit that is the world at large and how people perceive you, right? Please express that about yourself in my comments and please have it be genuine. If that's not a genuine feeling, then, you know, express what you genuinely feel, of course. But I encourage you to be that mindset person if you're a black pillar guy. Please don't leave hopeless comments in my comment section because that doesn't help anybody. It's just kind of dumb and redundant. It's like, okay, you're short and you don't look good. Just nip it in the butt at that. Don't go into, therefore, I feel hopeless. Just don't feel hopeless about that. Don't let the hopelessness be a feeling. Just get rid of it. Be like, okay, I'm short and I don't look good. The fact is, everything in this external world is based on externalized, formulaic bullshittery. So if you're genetically screwed, you're genetically screwed. That's just the fact of the world. But I'm not going to let it be a source of me feeling hopeless because I'm still going to be a badass and kick ass and be cool in spite of, in the minds of others, lacking height and looks. Whoop-de-doo. That really should be your psychology as an actual black pillar guy, right? Without whining or pouting about it just understanding the reality of it and moving forward anyway, you know? And you'll at least have marginal success in life that way versus no success. If you're at least shaken out of and immune to self-downtroddening bullshittery, right? So, At the one hour mark, coming close to the one hour cutoff line, I hope that each one of you can experience the maximal amount of joy and success with women in life that you possibly can, and that this video has been extremely useful and helpful to you, Um, and therefore, you will experience the best possible life you can. Perpetual Pleasurist signing out and plunging in. Have a good one.